If you have bought a smartphone gimbal and want to take better shots, you should learn a number of gimbal moves. That's the only way you'll really be able to use your gimbal successfully. But don't worry, it's not difficult. In the next few minutes, I'll show you the 10 most important movements and explain what to pay attention to. At the end, you'll see a montage of the individual camera movements. Today, I'm using an Insta360 Flow, probably the best smartphone gimbal you can buy at the moment. Also because it can be used as a power bank while in use, so you can be sure that your smartphone will never run out of battery. But before we look at the 10 best gimbal moves, you should know three important basic principles related to camera movements and gimbals. If you stick to these three principles, you will get much better results. Shots with camera movements not only look better and more dynamic than static shots, they also give a certain meaning to the shot. For example, if you move towards a subject, you automatically draw attention and focus to that subject. When you move away, you close with that subject like a goodbye. So don't forget that your camera movement serves not only an aesthetic purpose, but also a content purpose. Camera movements usually look much better if you include objects in the foreground in the framing. Sometimes the camera movement is only recognizable through the objects in the foreground. This lateral movement, for example, is hardly noticeable. Only when I include the bushes in the foreground in the shot can you see the movement and the shot gets much more depth. The best gimbal in the world will not compensate for all movements, especially up and down movements that occur when walking are not completely compensated by the gimbal. Even when shooting with a gimbal, you should therefore make sure to avoid certain movements. The ninja walk is often recommended in this context. It doesn't look particularly great, but it is effective. Actually, it doesn't matter how you do it. What matters is that you avoid bouncing up and down too much while walking. And one last tip before we look at the 10 best gimbal moves. Fix your exposure and focus before you start shooting. This will prevent your smartphone camera from unintentionally changing exposure or focus during the shot. That could ruin your shot. So here is the top 10 of the best gimbal moves, in order from simple to advanced. A simple dolly forward. Move in a straight line towards a subject. I usually use the gimbal in lock mode for this. As I said before, this movement puts the focus on the subject, introducing it. Watch out for objects on the sides. They add depth to the shot. In a slightly more advanced version of the dolly forward, you move the camera closely past or even through an object. The dolly forward is one of the simplest gimbal moves but it may actually be the most important move in your repertoire. Most camera and gimbal moves are meant to add dynamics and depth to your shot. And that's also the purpose of a side pan. You simply move the camera sideways from left to right or right to left. But be careful, you're not doing a rotation. You're doing a sideways movement. For this movement to work, you absolutely need objects in the foreground. Plants, branches, rocks, anything will work. And don't forget to fix focus and exposure. Otherwise, the camera might focus on the objects in the foreground. You can also use the pen to take a revealing shot. You move the camera sideways from behind an object and thereby introduce the scene. Similar to the dolly forward we saw at the beginning, you can also move straight back and do a pull back. The principle is the same as before, only this time you're moving backwards in a straight line. But this move gives a very different meaning to the shot than the dolly forward. It's not for introducing a subject, but rather for ending a scene or saying goodbye to a subject. Always check the way beforehand to avoid accidents. And yes, if your subject isn't necessarily a person or animal, you can shoot a dolly forward for simplicity's sake and then reverse the shot in post. We've seen that the pen is great for doing a revealing shot, that is, introducing a scene. But perhaps even better suited for a revealing shot is the crane shot. Here you move your camera from bottom to top. Again, watch for objects in the foreground. If your subject is covered by an object in the foreground at the beginning of the shot, this creates quite an interesting effect and a really cool shot. A gimbal is, of course, especially good for taking shots of people. And one of the best and easiest shots of people is the follow shot. You follow a person at a constant distance. You make sure that you move at the same speed as your subject. Of course, the tracking feature of your gimbal is especially useful for this shot. Tracking makes it easy to keep your subject constantly in the center of the frame. Try different perspectives and distances for this shot. For example, you might film mainly the upper body, or you might shoot slightly from the bottom up. Each perspective and distance creates a different effect. Another interesting shot is a follow shot that you take very close to the ground. And that brings us to the next gimbal move the low angle shot. Here you move your camera very close to the ground and perform, for example, a dolly forward or, as we have just seen, a follow shot. You use your gimbal in the so-called underslung mode. With the flow, for example, this is very easy. 
you hold the flow and simply turn the handle sideways upwards. The gimbal will then rebalance your smartphone and you can move your smartphone camera evenly close to the ground. Use the joystick to set the right angle and you're ready to start shooting. The next gimbal move is especially good when you are approaching a building. As you approach a building, the building will naturally get bigger and bigger and eventually the upper part of the building will disappear from the frame. To prevent this, move the camera up as the building gets closer. You can focus on a specific part of the building and then keep that area constantly in the center of the shot. For this shot, you can use the follow mode of your gimbal. Always make sure that the movements are smooth and not too fast. It is now getting a bit more challenging. For the orbit shot, you move in a semicircle or circle around your subject. The subject can be a person or of course also a tree, a statue or for example a small building. This shot is especially suitable for epic shots of people. So for a hero effect, to emphasize this effect, it is advantageous to film slightly from the bottom up. This emphasizes the dominant character of the subject. To perform this shot, you can use the follow mode or the pan follow mode. You set the angle and then move steadily around your subject. Make sure that your subject is always in the center of the frame. Again, of course, you can track your subject. This will make it much easier to execute this shot. You can achieve a very special effect by using the telephoto lens for your shot. In this case, the background is strongly compressed. This creates a very special effect called the parallax effect. The background moves at a different speed than the foreground. Whenever you shoot with the telephoto lens and perform gimbal movements, you have to pay special attention to the steadiness of your camera. Most gimbals have a follow mode, lock mode and pan follow mode, as well as an FPV mode. The special feature of the FPV mode is that the smartphone can also be rotated sideways. The roll axis rotates with the movement of the gimbal. Especially if you want to take POV shots with your gimbal, you can create very dynamic movements with the FPV mode, which looks similar to the shots of an FPV drone. For best results, hold the gimbal firmly with both hands and move your entire upper body together with the gimbal. You will see, this way you will get very interesting shots. And with the help of the zoom wheel, you can even perform a full rotation in FPV mode. To do this, simply move forward or backward, similar to the dolly forward or backwards, and turn the zoom wheel to the left or right. Now your smartphone will rotate once around its own axis. This is called the vortex effect. I wouldn't overdo it with this, but in certain situations the vortex effect can lead to interesting results. We've seen that with a gimbal like the Flow, you can capture footage that looks similar to what you would get from an FPV drone. And we want to reinforce that impression. And to achieve that in the best possible way, we need an extension. I have the 3 meter pole from Insta360 here. This one is pretty sturdy, especially if you don't extend it completely. You can of course use another extension or pole, but not every pole is up to the task. So make sure your pole is stable enough. Now with the help of the extension and the gimbal, we can perform movements that are even more similar to a drone shot. This works especially well when we move the extension and gimbal over a precipice, for example at the end or beginning of a dolly forward or backward. As always, simple movements look better and more cinematic than complex movements. Now that we've seen all 10 movements, let's take a look at a quick montage. still looking for a new gimbal, you will find a link to the Flow in the video description. If you already own the Insta360 Flow and want to know even more about how it works, check out my full tutorial. There will be more videos on smartphone filmmaking and the Flow of course, so stay tuned and see you next time.